Joyce type yes to mean that you are able to hear. I see Irene is here. Are you able to hear? Let me get a few more guys confirming that you can hear me. So if you're okay guys, then we can get started in the interest of time. Okay, thanks Mohammed Saad Adan. He can be able to hear. So I think we can proceed. And um, I think one of you requested if I could review the assignments that are given in the last class. So if you have your question paper, maybe you can get it before we go to our discussion for today. And that was a question on cash budget. That was a question on cash budget. And that was May 2015. May 2015, question number five. Question number five, that is on cash budget. Now, if you don't have it, I've sent it, I've reposted it again in the group. So I think it's the one that is appearing there uh, like most recent. So hope you are all able now to see the question so that we can start. Just take us a few minutes, then we can go into other functional budgets, into other functional budget. So if you have the question with you, you can type something there and confirm you have it. And if, 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 you, have, if you had done it, if you had done it, then you can move to your quest, to your solution so that we are able to follow along well. Okay, so allow me to read through the question. I'll read this very fast. We say that the following forecast relates to J. McKinney Limited. Uh, forecast revenue and cost for the quarter ending 30th June 2015. So we've been given April, May, and June. Then we have the direct material purchases of 112, 100,000, 135,000, followed by wages. Then we have uh, overheads, overheads. These are for production. And then we have admin. Then we have selling and distribution. Then we have the sales. Then again, we have forecast revenue and cost for the quarter ending 30th September 2015. That is the immediate following quarter. So we have materials for 90, wages 72. Then we have production uh, 45 and following. Then we have admin, selling and distribution. And again, we have sales. Now, some additional notes. One, we say the cash balance forecast on 1st July 2015 is 90,000. Then the period of credit allowed to suppliers average two months. Three, debentures valued at 125 will be used in the month of August 2015, and the amount will be received during the same month. Next is a new machine will be installed at the end of the month of June 2015 at a cost of 150. 
and payment is promised in early August 2015. Then we are told a dividend of, or rather sales commission of 3% is payable within one month of sale. And seven, six rather, a dividend of 100,000 shillings is to be paid in the month of September 2015. There is a delay of one month in the payment of wages and overhead. And lastly, eight, 20% of the debtors pay in cash and receive a cash discount of 4%. Then we have 70% of the debtors pay within one month and receive a 2.5 cash discount. And the other debtors pay within two months without a discount, without a discount. So let's see then, how are we supposed to do that? And we said in your workings, in your workings, it's important that you first present It's important that you first present the creditors or the purchases and the creditors payment schedule. So that is the first thing I would want to do or to present. So we say these are the creditors. Or we can call these purchases and creditors payment schedule. So as part of your workings, you want to have the purchases and creditors payment schedule and creditors payment schedule. Okay, so let us have the month, the month, we have the month of April. So I will show April here, followed by May, followed by June, followed by July, and then we have August, and lastly, we have September. And lastly, we have September. So we present that in, in statement or in columnar form, in columnar form. So let me get the gross purchases. So one, I have the gross purchases, the gross purchases. gross purchases so purchases in the month of april or the direct material purchases in april were amounting to 112000 in may we have 100000 in june we have 135 then in july we have 90000 then August we have 67, and finally in September we have 79,000, 79,000. Now this is helping me in analysis, so I double underline like that. Remember we say that one of the problems that we will always experience when preparing the word, the cash budget is the problem of timing of cash flows. Because we say there is a time gap between when the cash flow or the event occurs and when the actual cash flow takes place. So a good example is we could have an event called purchases in the month of April. So we have made some credit sale, but we may not be paying for those credit sale in the same credit purchases rather in the same month. So we are saying there is a time gap between when we made the purchases and when we are going to pay for them. That brings about the need of preparing these particular schedules as part of your workings. So let's look at how creditors are being paid. We jump to note two, and you are told the period of credit allowed by suppliers average two months. 
the period of credit allowed to suppliers average two months. So we say payment to suppliers. So payment to suppliers who had supplied us with material. So these guys, we will average two months. So we take two months before paying these people. So we say count from April, if we made purchases in April, then count two months and you can start your payment in the month of what? In the month of June. So we say this will be 112,000. So the sales that were made in April, then will be paid, or the purchases rather, that we did in April, we pay for them in June. The ones in May, we'll pay for them here, 100,000. These ones in June, we pay for them here. And these ones in July, we pay for them here, that is 90,000. So that's how we will pay the suppliers. It wasn't really a complex, a complex schedule. No, you just need to count two months, which is the period of credit allowed by suppliers average two months. And that's it. Please confirm that we are together. Confirm that you are still able to hear, that you have the question, and that you've followed what we've done so far. Okay. Now, very good, very good. Now let's have workings two. This is workings one. Then we have workings number two. Workings number two. So we will have this as our sales, sales, or the debtors, or the debtors. And then we say, and cash collection schedule. So this will be the sales or the debtors or the debtors. And then we have and cash collection schedule. Now let's have the same months here. So we have, this is the month of April. This is the month of May. This is the month of June. This is the month of July, same August and then September. Then September, so underline that nicely. If you like, you can draw columns across. Okay. Now, let me have my gross debtors or my gross sales. So we have the gross sales here, the gross sales, the gross sales which will be of 350,000, 350,000. The next we have 360, 360. Then we have 360 again in June, 360. Sorry, this one was 360, 350, okay? Pardon me for that, this is 360, 360. And then we have a 350, 350. The next is 440, 440. And then we have 350, 350. And this was 360, 360. And this is 360, 360. Okay, then down here we can have collection. We can have collection from debtors. Collection from debtors. Collection from debtors. Collection from debtors. Okay. Now, notice that because what I've seen a lot of us did is they separated the cash sales saying that was 20% and uh, 
Then they say the rest, which is 80%, will account for credit sales. But I think the correct treatment, the correct treatment would have been, you assume that all these are debtors because even the cash sales of 20%, you are told were of the total or the gross debtors amount. So that you will collect now 20% of these within the same month then you collect 70% and then you collect the remaining, which will now be 10%, but of these data. So there was no point of separating 20% and calling that cash sales and then to doing 80% and then now beginning to collect from the 80. No, this question specifically wanted you to take 20% of this and assume it's being collected within the same month since it was a cash payment. Then the following what? The following 70% uh, still of these debtors because the 20% is of the debtors and they pay in cash. Then we have 70% of the same paying within two months or within one month and getting a discount of 2.5%. And then the debtors or the other debtors pay within two months. So there was no point of separating cash and credit sales. All these were credit sales. Only that the 20% were to be received within the same month. And I want to assume that that is very clear. That's why I wanted to confirm that to everyone here. So let's say collection from data. So we start with 20%, 20%. So we are told that 20% of the data pay in cash and receive a cash discount of 4%. So we'll give these guys a discount of 4%, meaning that whatever you get there, you multiply by 0 0.4, 0 0.96. That would mean the amount that I'm including here is already net of the 4% cash discount. So somebody give us that figure. What is 20% of 360? Then give a discount of 4%. That means you multiply that by 0 0.96, 0 0.96. So somebody tell us what that figure will be. Anybody giving us that figure? Very good, very good, Millicent. So that will be 69,120. Notice that I am collecting it within the same month. That is 69,120. Now give me the next one for me. Do the same thing. So you take 0.2, you multiply by 350,000, and then you give a discount, you give a discount of 20 of 4%. So that will give us how much? Very good, 67,200. 67,200 in the same month that is May. Next one. Next one will be. So next one will be 0.2 multiplied by for 40,000 and then times times 0 0.96 times 0 0.96 that will give us 84 for 80 that will be 84 for 80 and then we say 0 0.2 times 350,000 times 0 0.96 somebody what do we get that should be the same as this one. So that should be 67,200, 67,200. Okay, thanks, Connie. Then August, we have 360,000, 360,000 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.96. What do we get in the month of August, somebody? 69,120, 69,120. Then next we have what? 0.2 times 360 times 
And I think we had that figure as 69, 120. It's just the same. It's just the same. So I hope that is clear, guys. We told this cash sale. So it just means that it was being collected in the same month. Okay, now let's collect the 70%. We collect the 70% and what have we been told? That 70% of the debtors pay, pay within one month and receive a 2.5 cash discount. So we say times what? Times 20% but times 0 0.975. How do I get 0 0.975? That will be 100 minus 2.5. 100 minus 2.5, which is 97.5%. So multiply 70% times 360 times 0.975. What do we get as the first one? Okay, somebody says, uh, that's millicent, 245, 700. That is 245. Sorry, we skip one month, one month, then we collect it here. 245, 700. 245, 700. Very good. Give me the next one. The next one, you take 70% of 350. Just need to change the six in your calculator to 50. And what do we get? 238, 8, 238, 875. Very good. Next one. Next one is... 0.7 times 440. 300, 300, very good. 300, 300, 300, 300. Give me the next one. From 440, we go to 350. What do we get? 238,875. 238,875. And lastly, times 360. 245,700. 2, Very good. 245,700. And you are told that the other data, so it's, it, it is still on these, which is what examiner was calling your data. So we are told the other data pay within two months. So what percent is that somebody? What percent is remaining out of what we have paid? 10%, very good. So this will be 10%. But this 10%, they're not receiving any discount. So we say the other debtors pay within two months without a discount, without a discount. Then they pay within two months. So what is 10% of 360 count two months? 10% 10 of 360 will be 36,000, very good. 10% of 350, looks like we are removing one zero, so we get 35, 35. Then 10% of 440, we get 44,000, 44,000. 
And then 10% of 350, we get 35,000. 35,000. And that is how we are going to collect the cash from the debtors. That is how we are going to collect cash from the debtors. So give me these totals. Give me these totals. So we don't need this total. We also don't need this guy. Okay, maybe you can give me from June. So we will only write up from July, August, and September. And we say we don't have a lot of some of these figures, so we may not know the exact amount. It will again depend with what were the sales in January, February, and March. So give me the total of 84 plus 238 plus 36,000. So the total of 84 for 80 plus 238, 875 plus 36,000. What do we get? 359, 335. Very good. 359, 3, 359, 330, 355. Sorry, 355, 355. Like that. Very good. Add these now. So we have 67, 200, add 300, 300, add 35,000. And that will give us what? Total for July. I guess this was for June. This was for June. So give us for July now. 402,500. 402,500. Give me for August. For August is 69,120. Add 238, 875, add 44,000, add 44,000. That should give us 351, 995. 351, 995. 351, 995. And lastly, lastly, we have 69, 120, add 245, 700 and then add 35,000. 349, 820. 349, 820, 820. So guys, let me know if there's any question up to that point. Any question up to that point? If you're okay, we can proceed to write the cash budget. I think the rest of the workings, you can be able to incorporate them within the cash budget without having to do a lot of workings because it's probably a delay in one month or something like that. But I want to know is the cash, is the purchases schedule or payment schedule and the debtors and cash collection schedule, okay? If it is okay, we can proceed. Very good, looks like we are fine. So let's write up the cash budget now. So this will be J. McKinney Limited. J. McKinney Limited. This is the cash budget. Cash budget. 
period is for the quarter ending. For the quarter ending, 30th September 2015. 30th September 2015. 30th September 2015. So let's have this in columnar form. And I hope you can be able to see my board clearly. Confirm you can see the board clearly. So what is the first thing that we need to bring in the cash budget? Somebody type there. The first thing we bring in the cash budget, this is just an analysis of receipts versus payment. And then asking ourselves, is there a shortage so that we can organize for financing? Or do we have a surplus so that we can know how to invest that profitably? Okay, balance brought down. Very good. So let's say balance brought down. So we have the balance brought down. And the balance brought down, we are told as at 1st July is 90,000. So this is July. This is August. And this is September. September. July, August, and September. July, August, and September, so that we say, let me bring this a little bit lower. So balance brought down, and that is 90,000, 90,000. For August and September, we'll continue to derive them as we proceed. Next item will be add receipts. So we say add Receipts, add receipt. And the first one we have here is what? Collection from debtors. So we say collection from debtors. So this will be collection from debtors. Collection from debtors. There's somebody waiting here. So give me the collection from debtors in the month of July. This one, 402500. This is 402500. Next one is 351. 995. And lastly is 349820. 349820. Any other receipts, any other income that we are getting? Any other income that we are getting? Somebody? Okay, Connie says debentures, very good. So let me include there. So we say issue of debentures. So issue of debentures. Issue of debentures or issue of debentures valued at 125 will be used or issued. That should be will be issued in the month of August 2015 and the amount will be received during the month. So somewhere in August, we expect to receive 125,000. We expect to receive 125,000 in the month of August. Anything else? All right, so you can just leave one line there. 
just in case we will get another income or another receipt we might include it there so let's say total total of the total incomes of the total receipts i'll present them here i just provide the necessary row but you may not try to fill it in yet let's analyze the payment so we say less payment less payments so the first one here we have payments to creditors payments to creditors and creditors starting from july will be a hundred thousand a hundred thousand next is 135,000 and next is 90,000 next is 90,000 that's how we are paying our creditors next next is let's go back to the question and next is wages payment for wages wages and how are we paying our wages we read we read which note not number seven not number seven not number seven we say that there is a delay of one month in payment of overheads and wages in payment of overheads and wages so when you are in the month of july we are paying for june when you are in the month of august we are paying wages for july when you are in september we are paying wages for august so let's look at that so we start with july in july we'll be paying the wages for june and the wages for june is how much a hundred thousand a hundred thousand then let's go to the month of august august will be paying wages for the month of july and wages for july is equal to seventy two thousand then in the month of september we pay wages for august which is 54 and so we pay 54 please confirm that that is okay and that it is understood a delay of one month in payment of wages is that clear is that clear how we paid our wages Somebody say if it is okay how we have treated our wages so that we go to overheads. All right, at least I have one yes. So let's go to overheads, payment of overheads. And the first one is overheads relating to production overheads relating to production so again we delay these ones by one month so the overheads for june as far as production is concerned are 40 those ones will be paid in july then we have overheads of 45 in april will be paid in in july or rather in august we pay for july in august we pay for july which is amounting to 45,000. And then lastly, we have 36,000, 36,000. Let's move to administration. Administration overheads, we do the same. So June 27, we pay them in July. Then july 22 we pay in august then may 25 we pay in june we pay 
or August 25, we pay in September. So this will be 25. 25,000. Next, we have selling and distribution. <clears throat> June is 18. We pay for them in July. July is 13. We pay for that in August. Then May is 11. Not May, but August is 11. We pay for that in September. Like that, like that, like that. Hope that is clear so far. Then next we are told in, in note number four, note number four, a new machine will be installed at the end of the month of June at a cost of 150 and payment is promised early August. So machine installation, machine installation cost amounting to 150,000 that will be paid in early August. Early August, we have 150. 150, 150,000, 150,000. Next is a sales commission of 3% is payable within one month of sale. So let's have sales commission. Pay within one month. So let's look at the sales for the month of June. And sales for the month of June will be 440. So I want you to give me 3% of 440. What is 3% of 440? 3% 3 of 440, and then we pay for that in the month of July. We are told it is paid within one month, within one month, within one month. So somebody can make sales probably uh, on the 25th of May, but within 25th of June, he expects to have been paid. That is within one month. So we are told within one month, just count one month. So what will that be? So 0 0.03 times 440. Somebody, 13,200. Thanks, Karen. We pay for that here. 13,200. Next is 3% 3 of 350. Times 350. That will give us somebody 10,500. Very good. 10,500. 10,500. Now that is 3% 3 of 350. And lastly, 3% 3 of 360. 3% 3 of 360. 3% 3 of 360. 10, 800. This is 10,800. So delay by one month and pay in the following month. Pay in the following month. And then note number six, we have a dividend. So we say dividend, dividend of 100,000 is to be paid in the month of September. So we have dividend of 100,000 paid here. So this will be 100,000, 100,000, 100,000 dividend will be paid in that particular month. Now, any payment that we have not included, guys?
So let's get these totals, the total for payment. So we say total payment. Total payment. And then here we have the balance carried down. So we have the balance carried down, balance carried down, balance carried down. Now we are not financing. There is no minimum desired cash balance. So there will be no issue of financing like we did in the previous example. And then just was we're paying for the amount that we took as overdraft in the following month. So give me the total of 942500. What will that be? So this will be 90000 plus 42500. 90000 plus 42500 that will give us 492 for So let's take this slightly up. Somebody says they can't see. Okay, I hope now it's clear. So let's have this total for payment. Total for payment is 100,000 plus another 100,000 plus 40,000 plus 27,000 plus 18,000 and then plus 13,200. That gives us what? That gives us two ninety eight two hundred. is 298,200. Now let's get the difference between A and B. That will be the balance carried down. So we subtract that from 492,500. And what do we get? We get 194 and 300. 194 and 300. So bring these as your balance brought down here 194 300 194 300 then add 351 add 351 995 add 125000 so this gives us 671 to 95. 671 to 95. Now give me the total of payments in August. Total of payments in August will be 135 plus 72 plus 45 plus 22 plus 13, plus 150, and then plus 10, 500. What do we get? Somebody confirm what are we getting? 447, 500, so that we try finish this, 447, 500, and then subtract that from 671 to 50. 295, sorry. 295. That will give us two, two, three, 
795. That becomes the brought down here. The brought down balance there. Add that to what? To 223. 223, 795. Add 349.820 giving us 573, 615, 615. Now somebody add these totals, add those totals, what do we get? 90, add 54, add 36, add 25,000, add 11,000, Add 10,800 and add 100,000. Somebody give me the result for that column, the last one. The last one, what do we have? 326,800. 326,800. 326,800. 326,800. Subtract that from 573. Subtract that from 573, 615. And that will give us 246,815. This will be 246,815,815,815. So guys, I hope that that is clear. I hope that is clear. That is what I expected for that question. So that now we can look at a few more functional budgets, a few more functional budget in the remaining time, in the remaining time. But if you have a question, feel free to ask. So if you're okay, let's move to other functional budgets now. Other functional budgets. We are going to use the question that I send you for ATD. It will help explain the concept. That is May 2019. May 2019, question five. May 2019, question five. Then we can move to one more for, from section two, from section two, section two. Okay. Okay, let's just mention this very quickly. We had looked at types of budgets. 
at types of budgets, types of budgets. And a budget, we defined it as a plan of action that is expressed in both quantitative and financial terms. And we say that budgets can broadly be classified into two. One, we referred to them as functional budgets, as functional budgets. And then number two, we referred to these as the master budget, as the master budget. So we say these are budgets for the various functions, the various functions that an organization undertakes. So maybe an organization will have a function for selling. And so they will need to prepare what? A sales budget. They will need to prepare a sales budget. We want to look at that today. Maybe they have production. And so they will want to write up a production budget. Production budget. Now, from production budget, they can say, what is our material usage to be able to meet this production requirement? So they write up a material usage budget, another type of what? Functional budget. Then they can write a material purchases budget, a material purchases budget. Maybe they'll also need to write a labor cost budget, a labor cost budget. And the one that we've just looked at, we have called it a cash what? A cash budget, which we said is the most important budget as all these budgets will do what? Will depend on this one. So we are from looking at a cash budget and now we want to look at other, at other functional budgets. Now, in our next class, we'll be combining all these budgets and coming up with what we call a master budget, which is basically the profit and loss statement and also the what? And also the balance sheet and also the balance sheet. So this is where we are at now. I think it's important to just remind ourselves where we are at. We are looking at functional or different types of functional budgets. What is a budget? A plan of action. But we express it in both quantitative and financial terms and financial terms. So now let's look at let's look at the first one here, which is a sales budget. A sales budget. A sales budget. We start with a sales budget. So number one, if you are writing in your book, you say we are looking at a sales budget. We are looking at a sales budget, sales budget. And so we are saying that a sales budget will simply be a forecast of expected demand or it is a budget of the forecasted demand. What does that mean? It means that this is a budget of what a company can reasonably expect to sell. What is it that the company can reasonably expect to sell, expect to sell. And so when we write up that forecast, then we refer to that as a sales budget. Maybe to mention this would be important that for me to write up this budget, I want to look at several factors. And so some factors that I want to consider is maybe what did my previous sales look like? Because you are not just coming up with figures. You need to look, be very reasonable. So you are asking, what did my previous sales look like? Maybe sales in the past month. What, how, you know, how, how many sales, both in terms of units and value, were we able to make? 
you want to look at current sales how does our current sales look like and that will guide you in being able to do what in being able to determine how the future looks you can look at even your trends in sales. Maybe your sales have been increasing by 10% or 15% or 20% or so, so that it will guide you when writing that particular budget. You want to look at some reports from salesmen. Salesmen are on the ground and they will be able to tell you that this is how guys are responding to this particular what? Product and all these uh, and many more will be some factors that will guide you. I'm also thinking of things like our production capacity. Because again, we don't want to say we can sell 100,000 units while we can only be able to produce what? To produce 80. So it must be within our production capacity. So if you are asked what factors do you consider in writing up a sales budget, you can remember to mention some of those factors now i want to give you a format here a format for a sales budget format format of sales budget now if you can remember the format then it will be very easy for you to write your sales budget it will be very easy for you to write your sales budget so the format of the sales budget, you want to say, what products am I selling? So I have column one here, and I present the products that we are selling. Then I say, how many units do we reasonably expect to sell? So we have unit column. Then we say, what is the selling price per unit? What is the selling price per unit? Then we can multiply units and selling price and get the value, the value of our sales or sales in terms of shillings. So that is how a, that is how a sales budget looks like. Very simple to remember. And so we are saying we might be selling product X and product Y. Product X and product Y. A thousand units, two thousand units. Then we say the selling price per unit is, is, is 100 shillings. The selling price per unit here is 200 shillings. Then we multiply these two. We say, therefore, the sales value will be like that. The sales value will be like that. And so that will give us our total, our total budgeted sales our total budgeted sales our total budgeted sales very easy format to remember let's say example now we look at an example it's important you can put down that format and then i want you to even write for me that particular budget for question five so we are looking at illustration question five this is question five question five of which year of May 2019, of May 2019, and that will be question number five, May 2019, question five, May 2019, question five. That is a more limited, so we can say part B, part B, part B. So let's try read this. We say, Amwa Limited manufactures two products, XL and YL, using two types of material, M and N. The following information relates to the production activities of the company in the month of March. So we have budgeted sales. So we've been given product XL and product YL. Quantities is 1250 and 3,111. 3, Price per unit is 215 and 302. Now try and write this. You already have the format, so you just need to say product, bring in the product here, units, bring in the units there, selling price per unit, bring it there, 
and then the value there. So let me see us write that and somebody to give us the value for total budgeted sales. What will be our total budgeted sales? Somebody should take you two minutes. It's only two max, so two minutes should be enough to write that. Everybody writing their budget. I'm also trying to write mine. So let's confirm what you have written. So products are which one and which one? Been told budgeted sales. Maybe I should have given my budget a title here. I should give my budget a good title so that I say this is Amwa Limited or Amwa Limited Sales budget sales budget sales budget i'm a limited sales budget so we say we have product xl and we also have yl units 1250 and 3111 selling price per unit 215 and 302, 302. So multiply and give me the value. What is 1250 times 215? Somebody 1250 times 215. What do we get? Very good, 268.750. This is 268.750. Next one, what is 311 times 302? What is 311 times 302? Very good, 939.522. 939.522. Very good. And therefore, what is our total? What is our total budgeted sales? Total budgeted sales. Now, this is in value. Give me the total of those two. What do we get? What do we get? Very good. Felista says one, two, eight, three, one, two, eight, two, seventy, two, two, seventy, two. Okay, so that is sales budget. We call that number one, number one, number one. So number two, number two, we call this a production budget. Production 
budget. Production budget. And like the name suggests, we are saying it is just a budget of what the company expects to produce or the production requirement, what the company expects to produce, what the company expects to produce, budget of what the company expects to produce to be able to meet the needs of the company. So we're asking ourselves that how many units do we expect to produce in this current period or in the period that we are writing a budget for? Then we write up a production budget. So some of the factors to consider will be demand or sales. So this will be able to, to, to tell us how many units that we produce because we are producing to be able to meet our sales. We'll also be looking at how many units can we be able to produce. So we can talk of production capacity, production capacity. Then what are our expected levels of stock? What are our expected levels of stocks of what? Of finished goods, both opening and what? both opening and closing, both opening and closing, okay? And then you are saying probably also, what is the availability of material? Material availability. And when I say this, I want to ask, do we have a limiting factor? A limiting factor is a constraint, which we looked at under production with a limiting factor, if you can remember, and you are saying this is a constraint that limits you as to the number of units that you can be able to do what? To produce. So we are saying is a budget of what the company expects to produce in this current period. And these are some of the factors that you want to consider. So let me give a format of this budget. How does it look like? So I will give a format for this budget. Formats again are very important. So they will help you to remember. So this is production budget. So I will bring my product here. So this is format of production budget. Format of production budget. So we'll bring our product here. So we say we are producing product X and also product Y. So we will ask ourselves, what is our budgeted sales? What is our budgeted sales? And this is in units. So I write my budgeted sales there in units. So budgeted sales in my case is 1250 and 311. But then I say, I must produce enough at least to have some stock of finished goods remaining once I have sold or after I have sold. So I will say add the budgeted, the budgeted closing stock, the budgeted closing stock. And this is for finished goods. And that is for finished goods. When I add this, it will tell me what is my total needs. So that is what I need to produce. That is what I need to produce. To meet both my sales and to leave me with some stock, you know, in the stores once I have sold. However, I don't need to produce what I already have. So I say minus budgeted what? Minus the budgeted opening stock, again of finished goods minus the budgeted opening stock of finished goods. And that will give me the budgeted production. That will give me the budgeted production. Will give me the budgeted production. Very good. So everybody trying to write their own budget now, write up your own production budget and you see what you get. 
Start with the budgeted sales, add the budgeted closing stock, and then budgeted opening stock of finished goods, you subtract. And tell me what is your budgeted production or how many units will you produce? So let me also write mine here. So we have, this is Amoa Limited. This is Amoa Limited. And this is the production budget. Amoa Limited production budget. So what are the budgeted sales in units? I can bring them here. And I say that my budgeted sales in units, just these values, is 1250 and then 311 and then 311. Budgeted sales in units is 1250 and 3011. Now, somebody give me the budgeted closing stock, budgeted closing stock of finished goods. What is the budgeted closing stock of finished goods? Somebody? Yes, we have 501. So for X, this is XL, let's say XL, sorry, yeah, we should have said XL, and here is YL, YL. So this is 501, 501, and 333. Three, three. I hope we can all see that under note 3. Under note 3, we have 501, 501 and 333 and 333. So give me the total needs. Total needs, what is 1250 add 501? 1250 add 501. Good, 1751, 1751. 1751. What is 311? Add 333. 344. 344. 344. 344. 344. Very good. Those are the total needs. Okay, you require to produce 1751 so that you can be able to sell 1250 and also to remain with 501 in stock. Here you need to sell, to produce 3444 to be able to have 333 in stock after you have sold 3111. So remember, closing stock you add. Now let's subtract the budgeted opening stock. So subtract budgeted opening stock. Budgeted opening stock, again of finished goods. That will be 200. And the next one is 443, 443. 200 and 443. So what is 1751 minus 200? 1551, that is the budgeted production. And you can say that this is budgeted production in units. It's always given in units, budgeted production in units. So this will be 1551. What about for YL? YL Itakua 3001. 3001. Three zero zero one. 
Very good. Any question up to that point? Okay, very good, very good. So look at this budget. From these, you write this because you will need the sales units here and then you come down and use them here. The same, same sales units that you used up here are the same sales units that you are bringing down here. Now let's look at the next one. So if this is what you are producing, then you need to ask yourself, what does your material requirement look like? So you write a material usage budget, a material usage budget. So briefly, we can say a budget of material requirement, a budget of material requirement, a budget of material requirement during the current period. A budget of material requirement during the current period. Now, what factors do you want to consider when writing this budget? The factors that you want to consider when writing this budget. Number one, of course, will be here, you say, production or units to be produced. Because the units that you are producing will determine what kind and even how much of material you are going to use. So you want to consider the production units, the production units. Two, you want to consider the, the, the different types of material the different types of material that you are using to be able to produce these units here. Maybe you require material M1 and material M2. Maybe something else that we can mention is the units required or the unit requirement, the per unit requirement per unit requirement of the material. So you say, for example, to produce one unit of Excel, I need four units of M1. To produce three units or one unit of YL, I need three units of M2, and so on. Then you can also say, what is the availability of that material? So you say, material, availability, material availability. Now let's write that, let's write that or let me give that format, so format of a material usage budget. So you say format of material usage budget. Format of material usage budget. So I will have the types of material here. So these are the types of material. The types of material. And maybe I have material one and material two. Material one and material two. Then I will say, what are the products that I'm producing? And how many units of each product am I producing? So that I say the products I'm producing are maybe X and Y. And I'm producing maybe 200 units of X and 200 units of Y. Now, then I will look at what is the per unit requirement of this material or of this product. So I say, that maybe one unit of X requires two units of M2. So I take this number of units and I multiply by two, and that will give me units of M1 required. Same here. 
times the per unit requirement for what? For the next for product. As far as M2 is concerned, then I will add all these, I will add all these, and I will say this is my budgeted usage. That is my budgeted usage. My budgeted usage in terms of in terms of units. If you like, it's possible that you can express it as cost. You'll just multiply by the per unit cost of material. The per unit cost of material, which is maybe another factor to consider. So the unit cost of what? The unit cost of material there. So everybody try write your what? Your material usage budget. Try write your material usage budget. Try write your material usage budget. I'm also trying to write mine now. I'm also trying to write mine. So this will be a more limited this is the material material usage budget material usage budget material usage budget and so let me look at the types of material here. So this will be the types of material. And I can get that in note number two. So the materials types, we have M and then we have N. So we have M and N, M and N, M and N, M and N. M and N. Then I have the products that I'm producing here and the units that I want to produce and the units that I want to produce and the units that I want to produce. So the products that I'm producing are XL and YL. The budgeted production is what I have here. So 1551 and 3001. 1551 as well as 3001. 3001. Now, let me see. Note 2. We are told that budgeted materials to be used per unit. So for me to produce one unit of XL, one unit of XL, I need six units of what? Six units of material M. So somebody tell me, what about 1551? 1551, 1551, I will require how many units of M? You can type for me. For me to, pre, to produce one unit, one unit, I require six units of M1. What about 1551? Okay, Felista says 9306. Very good. So,
So I can write that working here. So that will be 1551 times 6. 1551 times 6, and that will give me 9,306. 9,306, I hope that is clear. Clear? Next is to produce one unit of XL, I use four units of N. What about producing 1551? 1551, give me that answer. Somebody give us that answer. I am waiting, 6204, very good. So that will be 15, 51 multiplied by four, multiplied by four, and that gives us 6204, 6204, 6204. Now let's do YL, let's do YL. So we say to produce one unit of YL, we require two units of M. What about producing 3001? So it will be 3001 times 2. 3001 times 2, which will be what? 6002. 6002. Very good. Lastly, we are again saying to produce one unit of YL, we again require two units of N. So this will be, this will be 1550, sorry, 3001 again times two, which will still be 6002, which will be 6002, 6002. So tell me, What is the budgeted usage? And this is budgeted usage in units. Budgeted usage in units. So add this, add 9306 plus 6002. What do we get? Fifteen three zero eight. Fifteen three zero eight. And next one is this plus this. What do we get? Twelve two zero six. That is twelve two zero six. Twelve two zero six. Twelve two zero six. Twelve two zero six. Next. Next. Uh, which is number four, we have a material purchases budget. We have a material purchases budget. Okay. So, and you are saying this is a budget, a budget of what the company needs to do what? Needs to purchase. Needs to purchase so that they can be able to meet the needs of the particular company, so that they can be able to meet the needs of the company. So we are saying some of the factors to consider, some of the factors to consider will be number one here, the usage. So we are saying, what is our usage? What is our usage? So how many units of material will we use? And that will tell us how then how much we need to go and buy. Then we also need to determine the expected stock levels of material. Yes. 
what are the expected stock levels of what? Of material. So after we have been able to do what? To use in production, how many units do we want remaining in stocks? We also need to ask ourselves, what are the different types of materials that we are going to buy? Different types of material that we are going to buy. We can also ask ourselves, what is the cost of this material? What is the cost of this material? And also we can say, what is the availability of capital? availability of capital because we need money to go and buy. So what is the availability of capital? So that is our material purchases budget. Let me give you a format of how this would look like. Let me give you a format of how this would look like. So we have format, format, format of the material purchases budget. The material purchases budget. Material purchases budget. So we'll say, what is the type of material? What are the types of material? And maybe we are buying two types, M1 and M2. So we say, what is the budgeted usage? What is the budgeted usage in units, which is the figure up here? So we put it here, the first row. Then we say, what is the budgeted? What is the budgeted closing stock? Add the budgeted closing stock. Here was budgeted closing stock of finished goods. This one is budgeted closing stock of raw material. Budgeted closing stock of raw material. So we add here. We add here. And that will give us our total needs. That will give us our total needs, our total needs. So we add here and we also add there. Then we can say minus budgeted, minus the budgeted opening stock. Again of raw materials, again of raw materials. So we subtract here, we subtract that one here. And this will give us the budgeted purchases. The budgeted purchases. But this is budgeted purchases in units, in units. So this minus this will give you the budgeted purchases in units. This is what you require, but you don't buy what you already have in the stores. So you less that. Now, that is budgeted or material purchases budget in units. Then ask yourself, what is the cost per unit of material? What is the cost per unit of material? So multiply by that. Multiply by that here. So units times the cost per unit will give you the budgeted purchases will give you the budgeted purchases, but now in terms of value or in terms of shillings. So that is how your material purchases budget will look like. Material purchases budget will look like that. You can take it slightly high. Okay, down, down here. So let's take it a little bit lower so you can see. Are you able to see now, Tina? Lift it slightly higher, yes. Okay, very good. So 
I hope you have the format for that material purchases budget. Now try and write for Amwal Limited. Try and write for Amwal Limited. So let me write mine now. I write mine now. So I will just adjust this one here. So I call this Amwal Limited. Amwal Limited Material Purchases Budget material purchases budget the types of material are m and n are m and n are m and n m and n so start with budgeted usage in units what is your budgeted usage for material m somebody you can see that figure somewhere. Budgeted usage in terms of units. Ningapi. Okay, somebody says 15308. So we put here 15308. Now all these budgets are so connected. This one is connected to this one, this one connected to this one, this one connected to this one. So it's very really deliberate to arrange them like this. And then next we have 12206, 12206, 12206. Now look for the budgeted, budgeted closing stock of raw material M and N. So somebody to give me those values, how many units for M and L? For M and N. What is the budgeted closing stock for M and N? Very good. We have a hundred and what? So this is one hundred. So I want you to add one hundred and also add one fifty five. One fifty five. A hundred and one fifty five. So we require to use fifteen three zero eight. And after we have used this, we need to have a hundred units in stores. So we will buy much more than what we require. So how much do we buy? Fifteen three zero eight plus a hundred. What do we get? What do we get? Good, 15408, 15408, 15408. Our next one is 12206 plus 155. What do we get? 12361, 12361, 12361. Let's now go to budgeted opening stock of raw material. Subtract that, so give me the opening stocks. The opening stock, ngapi na ngapi. Very good, two, two, one, two, two, one. And also 50, 50, so subtract that one, subtract that one, subtract that one. And so what are your budgeted purchases in terms of units? 
budgeted purchases in terms of units. Takuangapi for material M fifteen one eighty seven. Fifteen one eight seven. Fifteen one eight seven. Next here we have what? This is fifteen one eighty seven. Next is twelve. Twelve. Somebody says three one one. Three one one. Twelve. 311 12311 12311 then the cost per unit cost per unit somebody to get us the cost per unit so that we know how much will we pay what is the cost per unit for what the cost per unit for m is what cost per unit for m is what Yes, this is times 90, times 90. And the other one is times 60. Okay, 90 is in note two. Somebody says I can't see 90, 90. Or is it the board you can't see? Or is it the 90 you can't see? Try to find 90 somewhere in note what? In note two. I hope if it is the board, you can now be able to see. So multiply the units you are going to buy by the cost price per unit, the cost price per unit. So what is 15,187 times 90? 15,187 times 90. Somebody has already given it to us, 136,830. And the next one is what? Twelve three one one multiplied by sixty seven thirty eight six sixty seven thirty eight six sixty six sixty. Give me the total of the two. So if you are going to buy these, you must have thirteen three sixty six plus plus seven thirty eight six sixty. 1366830 plus 738660. And you must have how much? 2,105,490. 2,105,490. Okay. I said you can also. If you want, express this in terms of cost. I've expressed it in terms of units. So you can multiply by what? 90 and this one by 90 and you will get the budgeted usage. And that will be very important when writing your profit and loss account. We'll be looking at that in the next class, which will be on Monday. Now, I will mention one more budget one more functional budget one more functional budget they've not asked for it here but i want to mention then in the in the in the assignment that i give you you will try to go and write that one as well now it looks very much like this one so it will not be hard for you to write it looks very much like this one like this one and they are all determined by what? The units that we are producing. The units that you are producing tell you how much material you will require. 
the units you are producing tell you how much material you will require. But also, the units that you are producing will also tell you the, 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 how much you will need as far as labor is concerned. Because these units require manpower to produce them. So the result of that is what we will now call a labor cost budget. So that is the one I want to mention here now. Uh, let me rub these. So I will tell you what it is and give you the format. Then you just go and enter figures in the assignment. So this will be the labor cost budget. Labor cost budget. Labor cost budget. And simply we are saying is a budget of what? Is a budget of labor requirement. It is a budget of labor requirement during the period. Is a budget of labor requirement during the period, during the period. So some of the things that you want to ask yourself or factors to consider, factors to consider is the units to be produced. Units to be produced. How many units are you producing? That will guide you, you know, when writing the labor cost budget. Then you will say, what are the different types of labor? What are the different types of labor? What are the different types of labor? Maybe we have skilled and unskilled, or we have labor one, labor two, however way you classify them. Then you will have, what is the rate per hour? Or let me start with, what is the requirement per hour? Or requirement per, per unit in terms of hours? How many hours do you require to produce each and every unit? How many hours do you require to produce each and every unit? And lastly, what is the cost per hour? What is the cost per hour? Is given labor availability? Those are some factors that you also want to consider in writing this particular budget. So let me give you a quick format. It will look exactly like this one, a labor cost budget. So we say, what is the labor cost budget? What is the labor cost budget format? What is the labor cost budget format? So I will say types of labor. Now instead of types of material, you say types of labor. You say types of labor. Now the types of labor will probably have one that is skilled and another one that is unskilled. You could also have semi-skilled and so on and so forth. Then you say, what are the products that we are producing? Products. And what are the units that we are producing? So you will come and say, we have product what? X and Y. In our case, we have XL and YL. Then you will say, how many units? How many units? So we have those number of units and those number of units. Okay. Then you say just the same way we have done here that one unit of Y requires four skilled labor hours. So what about 1551? You take that times four and you put here. This one may be times two. You put here. 
put there and put there and then you add this one here and you call that budgeted labor hours that will give you your budgeted labor hours budgeted labor hours budgeted labor hours now this is labor budget or the labor hours budget but now i want it in terms of cost so just like what i said you can multiply this by the cost per unit so now here you will multiply by the rate per hour so you say multiplied by the rate per hour multiplied by the rate per hour and when you multiply by the rate per hour the resulting figure is what we'll call budgeted labor cost this is budgeted labor cost budgeted labor cost so put it there and there this is just this figure times this figure this figure times this figure and then you add these two and you will get your total budgeted labor cost now this one is in terms of shillings this one was in terms of hours the one up here is in hours the one down here is in shillings now that one you will find it in the next question which i want you to go and try as assignment as assignment i had typed it there for you and that is example one example one which is mrembo limited so mrembo limited you write up until the labor cost budget that's the assignment but remember that the format will look exactly like this one so how we wrote this one is exactly the same way you are going to write that one and i hope that will be very possible for every one of you now we will continue with our discussion on this in the next lesson again but now try and combine the sales, try and combine the labor cost, try and combine other budgets to be able to come up with what we call a master budget or a profit and loss, a profit and loss statement. And we'll also try to write some balance sheet. So try not to miss that particular class. It will firm up what we've done today, but also we'll have something additional. Now, if there is no question, we can call it a lesson we've extended a little bit because we also started a little bit late but let me just know if we are okay were you able to follow were you able to hear everything we've said today are you clear on the assignment you can also go and try question 5 of may 2017 from section 2 again i've also sent that one to you so all the formats will be exactly the same nothing is changing nothing is changing okay what is the assignment